for me to search the web to get the different ideas of what you might want to use to help research the history of your house. And I'm going to show you several different examples from different locations. It's not going to be the full history examples. It's going to show you what our items you have need. Um, some of, I'll show some examples, and then I'll show you what we have in the whole library, starting with the main community album down to each of the three adult departments we have, and what they could have. Well, really, there's four, but I don't think there's anything in business and technology. So I will be showing you what we have available. And the last one is really exciting because I took the training last week, and then I tested, and yes, genealogy can use it. So. So this was another addition to um, researching the history of your house. Can everybody hear me okay before I get started? All right. Okay, here we go. So basically you're gonna learn how or where do I start to do the research? What type of resources should I be looking for? What's available here at Allen County Public Library? And also basically the information available at the local, which is Fort Wayne County, Allen County, State, which is Indiana, and then the national. So if you want, if you live outside the Allen County area and you want to do research, you're going to want to look for the similar departments for your local city or your county, and then look to see what the state has, similar to what I'm going to show you. Basically, you're going to take a good look at the outside of your home. You want to see what type of an architectural style. Is it a colonial, Cape Cod, salt box, ranch? Any kind of style that could depict like who might have designed it. Because you get the Victorian houses you've got in like the northern part of Michigan, they have the mushroom houses where the roofs kind of curve and tuck under. Wow. And so they're very unusual houses in every different every state and you you know where you come from, you, you might not realize that it's unique to one area, not the other. What type of materials did they use? Well, you know they didn't do vinyl siding back then. It could be a wood frame, it could be a brick home. It could have the wood shingles or wood shakes, as my husband would call these things. And um, the style of the windows, how many windows were in there? Um, have they been replaced to the new current energy saver type windows. Some of them might have some of the originals in there, and I was told that the more panes in the windows, the older the window is. Wow. So, fireplaces, how many is there? Is the base wide enough to cook in, heat up a home, whatever? You need to look at some of these things. The number of stories, one, one and a half, two, is it a bi-level, tri-level? one level of ranch. Does it have a crawl space? Is it cement pad or is it a basement? Is it a cemented basement, full basement, or is what I grew up in, a Michigan basement which had a little bit of plaster on the edge and the rest was dirt. Oh yeah. Whenever our parents sent us down to get the stuff out of the pantry, it was like, oh God. Because I had to go into the Michigan basement portion. And it didn't, you know. <laughs> so us little kids, it's almost like, is it going to collapse? <laughs> so, was there any additions added to it? Did they remodel? Or maybe they bought a second lot and expanded? These are questions you're going to look at. Because when it really started out as a small house and they added a room, remember, outdoor plumbing, you know, the outhouses and stuff, and all of a sudden they brought it indoors with a bathroom and everything else. My uncle, my great uncle did it in 1968. He finally installed a bathroom in his home. <laughs> so you've got to look at those things because that's an additional room, or did they take a room out? Okay. So this one here is on 2603 Sherman. As you can see, most of those windows have shutters, but all of a sudden, there's an odd one. How new is that? Was it flat like the rest? Did they create it into like a sitting room or a sewing room or a reading area? Because now it has like a bay window or a box window type thing. Did they put plants up there to grow because of the light? We don't know. 
And then this door is different because the front door has the shutters next to them. Is that a window that's been added or is that another door entry? We don't know until you actually go in and take a look at it. And if it's your home, you would know if it's a door. But those two plus the little window are slightly different. But the little windows, those are usually like that in the 1940s and 50 homes. They had one small window. Was that a window like for if you had a piano or something to get that light in that room? I have no idea. This is not my house. <laughs> it's not a relative's house. I just happened to drive by. And I like the kind of like the brick post and stuff. And I was wondering about it, so I took the shot. And I'm also questioning the front porch because it's level and the back area. Were there, they there when it was first built in 1900 or not? You want to look around your house property. Are there wells or cisterns around that might have been covered up? Are there, is there anything in it? Cisterns could also be in the ba um, basement. The roof structure. How many chimneys does it have? Where is it located? And we now have some handouts. The outbuildings. Where are they and the location? And like the house location, how close to the road? or how far back, because some people, like my house up in Lansing, is 35 feet from the edge of the lawn next to the road. Some places might be 50, 60 feet back, depending on when it was built and how much land they had around it when they built it. Well, was it part of a farmhouse before it became part of the city? Were there any outbuildings like sheds? My grandmother had a garden shed. My grandfather had his own shed. Um, the foundation, you can tell when that they added to it or if they had to repair it. Then um, was there trash pits back when they were allowed to burn and dump? How often was, could have been moved because you'd find bare spots in the lawn? Are there paths nearby? Did they take paths to the woods and stuff? Because then they might have been you know, handling bottles and stuff that they might have, or things might have gotten dropped by children and stuff along the way. I lost the playhouse at my first home that I remember. And I was quite upset because it was burning down and my toys were in it. And all my mom was worried about, did I obey her by going to the front porch like she asked me, or was I in the fire and they had to be notified by the fireman had to be notified. But she come around the corner and she goes, oh good, you minded me. <laughs> so, these kinds of things. You don't know what might have happened or what was there once and before. Okay. Materials inside your home. What type of flooring did they have? A lot of times people fully carpet their house recently. That was the in thing in the 60s and part of 70s. They carpeted every floor. Now they're going back to the wood flooring again. When you pull the carpet up, how many different Floor um, items is it, is it dark wood and wood mixed with light wood because they covered it with carpeting and didn't care. Mine I had when I covered the carpeting off in my house, the old space heater that went out when my son was two. And I couldn't put one back in because the codes were children shouldn't walk across the spot the space heater. Because when I walked across it, it was quite hot and you didn't walk slowly across you either went around or quickly ran across. So these things might be where, you know, like the old style of heating and things might pop up in your research. Um, are dates found in the closet? Is it etched in the foundation? <laughs> My last fam childhood home, it had 1912 written on it with the name Charlie. So we were wondering if that was shortly after it was built or when they started putting reinforcement against the dirt basement. So we, I don't know, I mean. Um, room layouts, did they put two rooms together or did they split a room up? My grandmother used to have a, a bedroom in her, on her first floor when she was talking to me when I used to stay. She said, oh yeah, we used to have a bedroom down here before she expanded it to make it a bigger living room because of grandkids and stuff during the holidays. I wouldn't have never noticed it by just the way it looked, but she told me there was one and there was three bedrooms upstairs and she had five kids, so yeah. <laughs> the other one was downstairs. Ceiling, 
if they had drop ceilings, did they tuck things in between that space to hide? My sister, when she bought her house, found $20, $20 or more in rolled quarters Ooh. tucked in the drop ceiling of her basement. So, I mean, things people put up there and then forget they have them when they move. Or uh, children don't remember mom and dad hide things in their house. <laughs> when we moved to the last house my parents had, the barn had trunks and toys, old toys and books in it. So, again, fireplaces, were they skinny, were they wide to cook? Was there any down in the basement so on hot days they went down and cooked there instead of heating up the home on a hot day. Um, what was left behind? Was it stored in a basement, attic, or possibly in the garage? Did they leave photographs and documents? You know, as you move into a house and you're starting to look at it and wonder, who lived there before? And all of a sudden you're finding little trunks, little things here and there, and it's like, whoa. Looking for artifacts. Areas in the house Again, attic, basement, ceilings, walls. What was what could be left behind? Trunks, diaries, letters, papers, coins, toys and games, books, maybe dishes. My son at his house found this note. He knew there was only one family that lived in it. But it says this garage was built by the Shinks. And then it stresses the structure over the garage was built. And they gave it time, but it's been broken off. And it is set for the ash trees and whatever is behind that wire. The trees came from MSU. And it was the department, the time frame. The guy who built this home worked at MSU up there in, my, in the Okemos area. So this gives an idea. This is a beautiful piece of history of that house because it's telling you what type of wood they used. The windows in the room above the garage, which was called the great room, came from one of the old buildings at MSU. They just recently got replaced this year because the heat and the cold air and stuff that kept coming through the windows. So that was a beautiful find when they went to work on shifting the room a little bit so they could make a bigger bedroom and then they found this. So. And then again, looking for artifacts, you search in the yard for wells, citrons, bare spots, Items that could be fine, coins, bottles, old toys, etc. Treat your search like an architectural, an archaeology dig. A little bit at a time. Just don't do a huge dig because you could break a valuable item that you didn't realize was buried there. And other things that you might come across. We did used to have an employee here who used to love to go and look at old maps to determine where the old outhouses could be. And then he'd go digging and found some beautiful antique bottles. So, review your findings. What did you find? Were they the bottles and jars? Were they medicinal? Were they for home remedies? Or were they used to um, put up for vegetables, fruits, sauces? Maybe the homeowners made home brew, brew beverages, beer, dandelion wine. My husband's grandfather made dandelion wine. When we went to visit him one year, he upped the drinking age for that. Whoa. Nobody underneath the age of 40. <laughs> All the grandkids were in their 20s. <laughs> so you didn't, you didn't get to experiment, you know. But these kind of finds is like, what did they do? What did they use these things for? Like cracks. Were they there to um, make coleslaw, sauerkraut? Um, do some other kind of brine work. When were they made? Where were they made? <coughs> the toys and games. We found old books that we never even saw before. And it was like, ooh, cool. Was it made by an individual? Or did they build their own? When I grew up, we made our own skateboards. The old buckle-on roller skates and a flat piece of board. We put the wheels on and we went road on um, skateboarding. Of course, we had to watch the hill we went down and uh, <laughs> caught us and said, you could hit traffic. No. So yeah, who might have used it? Infants? Children? Or did the, old, the whole entire family use any of the items you might have found in your house? 
Talk to the neighbors. Check to see if they remember who lived there before you. Um, find out who lived the, in the neighborhood the longest. Maybe they'll not remember more than one owner before them, who they were, or how often did they have family come over. Is anybody still living in the city where they, you may go talk to them about the house that they might have grown up in? Also, the neighbors might have memories of block parties, barbecues, sitting on their front porch, you know. And I might even tell you what the house looked like back when he first met or she first met that homeowner. Date your house. Find out when the property was first purchased, which would be in the um, Bureau of Land Management, um, um, General Land Office, or you can look at deed index. Who did they purchase it from? Did it go from like 180 acres down to 10? How often was it split up? Who owned those properties as they came down? Where can you find such a thing? Abstracts. You can also find out as it's being built, wasn't that there was remodeled, expanded, um, how the exterior might have looked, the interior, when it was done, so you could see the differences. Legal description, name of your subdivision, block and lot numbers. Legal descriptions will always be the same. Street names may change, addresses may be renumbered, but the legal description of your property doesn't change. Okay. This is a Zillow address for, I had a patron come in looking for one for her boyfriend and wanted to know who lived there in 1928. And this is here in Fort Wayne. There's the picture of the house. And then it said it was built in 1910. There it was, the exterior was brick, it's a historic. So has it been registered? Has it been registered as a historic building with the national um, register? You have to, when you're fixing up your house and putting things in it, use the same type of materials, the same colors as what, what it was when it was first originally built. They have regulations, if it's been registered, you have to follow those regs. Okay. Other features, here's the parcel number. The location is in Wayne Township, West Central District, subdivision. So right there on Zillow, you can, you can find this in anywhere. You can find it in any city throughout the U.S. as well as the country. There's my grandfather's second home that he rented out to his sons. It was right across from um, where he lived. It was built in 1940, but it doesn't give me any other thing. But it says the lot acre is one, which means my grandmother sold just enough for that person to have one acre, and the rest of the land she rented out to farm. So. What type of resources will you be using? Okay, city directories, county directories, gazetteers, maybe a street guide to find out how they were named, when it might have been changed. And to really locate anything, you would want to use, if, if you didn't know who lived there before, is to look at the cross street index in the back, which started in 1927. This one here has a Dr. Charles Luke living there in 1927 in that house on Sherman that was built in 1900. So um, street names changing to Fairfield in 1902. It was previously named Griffith. House numbers in 1899, 1889, Amanda Dawson was living at 140 East Berry. This is the house in 1889 on Berry Street. It was 140 East Berry. In 1902, it was 400, uh, 436 East Berry, and she was still living there. There's the house. 
So before 1902, houses were renumbered, and resources you can locate that on is the Sanborn Fire Insurance map. They show the old and new addresses, also new numbers. Land records, you can look for grantee and grantors to see who purchased the land as you go back with the homeowners, find out who was the first original owner if you don't have the abstract. On the page on the left would be grantors and grantees, and then the, the second page is grantees and grantors. What does that mean exactly? Grantees means you're buying, grantors means you're selling. The abstracts of title has the legal description of the property, summary of land transactions prepared by a title insurance company. This one is out on our website, and it goes from the very first person who ever owned that piece of land down to the one that owns the current location on that subdivision. You could go in records, or is this protected? You know, if my neighbor has a record, do they? Abstracts of titles are right there at the title insurance company. You can always get a copy. Of, there'll be a fee unless you're purchasing a home. Most of the time it comes with you with your home. But we have several of them out there on our website, as well as several in book forms and in other counties. The Cal County has a few of their abstracts in our collection. Are those pretty up to date? Well, they're up to date to the last person who owned the house but before that abstract got donated. Okay, you have maps. There's atlases, bird's eye view, plant maps for the rural. Uh, may include maps of cities with no names of the owners plus the fire insurance. Here's a copy of the 1907 bird's eye view. As you notice, there's two little houses between Lillian and Irene. One of those is that one house on Sherman Boulevard that I showed you. One of those two houses is 2603 Sherman Boulevard. So you can even find your house, depending on how old the house is, on a bird's eye view map. And that was done by Bert Griswold. You can locate architects if you know of um, how the style is. Like in Lansing, it would be Darius Moon or um, Albert Kahn. There's a, several different special, you know, famous architects like Frank Lloyd Wright. He did a, quite a few different states with his specific designs. Fort Wayne has a home done by Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, you can look through city directories in the back in the business section to find out what architects or architect companies were available during those time frames when your house could have been built. Were there carpenters? Maybe the landowner built his own house. We don't know. Arch also has a list of some architects out on their website. The plans, so they have some of them in the Arch office plus the building department, depending on what year and time frame, may have copies of building plans on homes as they were being built here in Allen County. Sorry about this. This has never happened to me before, so now I'm having fun with this. Okay. There we go. All right. Books. We have a lot of books on city histories. County histories usually tell you who was first here, who might have built certain things. You have interim reports, 
that were done here in Indiana only that I know of, and that tells you what was being built where, what streets, what subdivisions. Regional histories might have some older historic homes might be mentioned. If you're looking for the homeowners, you're going to look at biographies or family histories. You might want to see if they had any personal diaries or old letters around. Census records. If you're looking to see who's living there, you're going to want to look for and like an every person household. Well, they started in 1850 with listing everybody in the household. 1880, they began relationships to the head of household. 1900 and 1910, married women, how many children and how many are still living. That's in case you're trying to search on ghosts in your house, or haunt, haunting, <laughs> you know. Could there have been something that went and, and the spirits will stay in? Street numbers started appearing in 1900 and through 1940. The 1950s are not out yet. You have until 2022 before we may even see them out in our um, databases. City or county records, building permits. City inspectors' annual reports might list new homes that came in or, you know, or new buildings being brought up, um, out to, into um, the city to expand areas. Contractor lanes. Does the city or the county have special lanes on a contractor because they are fault, found fault with delays of building or owing businesses money for materials? Mortgage records. You can find out who might have owned that home by um, any kind of mortgage indexes and stuff that we have out on microfilm. Even if the building Not market. current ones. No, I'm saying if it's been paid, you know. Well, then we do have mortgage indexes from like 1880s, like 1902 or something like that on our microfilm, which means older mortgages. You will not be able to see current mortgages. No, no, no. no That's all private. Tax assessments, assessor's office, tax list of older ones, voters registration, wills, probates, and or state records you could review and research. And again, vital records that are out on our databases, microfilms, or even indexes in our books. Newspapers. Most newspapers nowadays list building permits that have been filed. They've been listing new constructions that are going on. Articles could highlight houses, death and obituaries, and even accidents, if you're looking for the hauntings. <laughs> we get a few coming in saying the house is haunted. How can they research it? Other local records, again, records of architects. They might have files stored somewhere like an arch or at a university archives area. I know Albert Kahn in Michigan, his files are in with the Bentley Library at U of M. Realtors might have old card updates on those homes. Utility companies, maybe, if they have these old ones where you can trace old records. Pictorial histories, community albums. But on the realtors, I know in Lansing, we have a Stebbins collection where the realtor took a picture and had an index card listing when it was built, when it was first sold for, whether or not it had additions, and then who was the current owner. And I got to see my house was up there, the garage wasn't there yet, and no neighbors when it was first had a picture taken. It's not that way anymore, so. Resources here at Allen County. Databases, the community albums, we have photos of houses, quest papers, some of the quest club members wrote about historic homes. Newspaper archives, you might look at like the Journal Gazette and the News, News Sentinel basically had once a week in the 20s and early 30s, a highlight of a home here in Fort Wayne. Most of those are in a file somewhere else, I'll show you in a little bit. 
newspaper archives, looking for obituaries, possibly even look just browsing the paper to see if there was anything about your house that was written up in the old papers. Newspapers.com. What's here at the genealogy center? Databases. We have a free one, which is called the Allen County Indiana Resources. We have on there abstracts of titles for existent. We have one, and we have Pleasant Township tax list near the abstract area. The resources of historic districts. Maps are out there on the Allen County site. We have city directories out there in databases. Ancestry has it. You can find copies of them at Internet Archives of the city directories. And of course, family resources to learn about the history of the families that may have lived in your home. Okay, basically here on Ancestry we have the census, city directories. There's land records indexes for all 50 states out there. Probates and wills for all 50 states. Vital records, they could be indexes or the actual images. Periodical source index. Maybe one of the local genealogical societies wrote about certain homes in their area. You might find it out there. If not, you're going to search for the individual who may have lived in that area and see if someone did an article on them. What, were they part of a cemetery listing? Were they part of the officials from a government? We don't know. There's different ways of locating information on the individual or, or the house. Okay, again, books, abstracts. Builders of Greater Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne architects and firms. There's a book out on them. Books about individual architects. Again, family histories. City indexes and transcriptions. Cemetery indexes and transcriptions. Vital records. Index of names of persons and firms. This isn't Indiana only. It was done by the WPA in the 1930s. Abstracts, again, for various counties, we have them indexed to deeds, either in books or microfilm. Here is city and county directories for Fort Wayne. From 27 to current, the cross-index of the streets. We have city directories since 1858 here in Fort Wayne to the present. Allen County has one in 1906. We don't have a lot of them. Then they picked up again in 1965. We have in our collection. Stop in 68, picked up again in 1972, up through 1998. But 1999 to present has all of Allen County, but it's sitting in the Allen County section. Interim reports shows you a map of a subdivision plus um, names and maybe photos of a house. And here's one right here. The house in this subdivision here. And they listed what the names of the houses were called. Edison Bishop House. One just says house on Florence Avenue. It's a craftsman. So. Here's one in Adams County. We also have one for Decatur. There's others too, but I only grabbed two of them to show. Here's the land records. And we have deed indexes, mortgage indexes, actual mortgage records, tax records, abstracts, title again. Those blue boxes out on our brown kiosk near the cart catalog. The two on the right side near the printers are Fort Wayne and Allen County at the top with street maps, bird's eye view maps. Then we have Indiana underneath it. The next set is next to the scanner. It's got Canada, England, Europe, and Germany in it. And then there's a no label. And then they, I've shown you two examples. The Gray's new map of Lewisburg, Green Greenbrier County, West Virginia, 1880. I like this one. This guy got 92,100 acre grant Ooh. back on November 6, 1739. And on that map has names of everybody who lives on those acres. Which I was quite surprised when I came across that. I almost brought it in to show you guys. Okay. 
then the microfilm, land records, taxes, voters registration, city directories, final records. As you see, we have a lot of cross stuff. It's like databases, books, microfilm. It can be found. It can be found on family search. When you search a card catalog on a place, you're going to look at all the various records they might have. They also have some city directories out there, too. News clippings. We have a book called the Fort Wayne Newspaper Index pre-1986. And these are the subjects regarding houses there. Then we have the scrapbook of Fort Wayne history. And I'm giving you just two volumes for the historic houses. And then we have scrapbook of Indiana history, which is also his news clippings put together as a book. They were trying to save a lot of room by getting rid of the vertical files. So, there's over 300 volumes for Indiana scrapbook history. There's over 100 and something for, almost 200 for Fort Wayne. So there's a lot of volumes of newspaper clippings, and these are where the houses are in. And then here's a one page showing you what it would look like and what the topic of the newspaper would be. And there's a little closer up one. Newspaper bulletins, old, um, old Fort Bulletin has historic houses in it. The Old Fort News also has historic houses in it, and they each have an index. And the latest newspaper article we just got is the FGS Forum Magazine. Last week, I was giving this link to this article. These walls can talk, talk how to create a house history. This one has not been put out here on the floor, but if you ever want to see it, we can go back to our peruse card, bring it out for you. When you get done reading it, give it back to us. We'll put it back there. Eventually, it will be in our open periodical stats until it's got enough copies to put it in a bound book. And so eventually, it will go between Pennsylvania and New Jersey in our current periodical. Reader services. They still have vertical files. One of them has historic homes in two binders. They have, they've been keeping it updated. They have part one is miscellaneous plus A through H. And then part two is I through Z. And then the little bottom one here is the tab dividers regarding each house by its surname. And then they had these old brochures for the Shawnee Place in West Central District. And a copy of the old Pathfinder they created back in probably the 1960s. You've got your research in your house. Which is going to be updated soon by us. They also have a vertical file on Indiana Collections, which have collections of a picture file of poems and things in it. Arts and Music. They have books on house history, you know, how you know how to determine the architectural design. They have a book on that. They have a book up on the Sears houses uh -huh. that were back in the 1930s. They have interior decorating books. They have other topics regarding house designs and creations, as well as how to research history of your house. They also have in their media, it's in storage walking tour of one of the Fort Wayne area's houses, historic homes. Hoopla. This is the latest resource that's available to us. You can get it from your laptop or desktop computer. It's at hoopladigital.com. You can download an app on your tablet or smartphone using either, if it's an Apple, the iOS, or an Android if it's other uses of devices. So you just install the application. You create your own login with your library card, your email, and a password. So here's more information again. The resources will be ebooks, audiobooks, video, and television. Those are the three breakdowns of your search. So when I did house history, these are a few of them. So 
The e-books are just the open books. They're headphones, they're audio. And if it's like a cam, movie camera, it's your videos. And so here are some more tracing the history of houses. There is the Victorian style, small houses of the 40s. Um, Sears house designs in the 30s. And then 1945, the land. I, that one is, I don't know how they got with that in the house history, but I haven't looked at it. The decoration of houses, talking about the interior designs. You can see the molding of the windows and stuff there. You can open these, are these? Campus that you can kind of open up. No, these are electronic books that you can look at. You can download yeah. from Hoopla, keep them for 21 days, and do, and do some reading. Because as you know, our books don't go out, and we have a lot of how-to searches. But instead, you can do Hoopla, and you can download them and read them. And the, and the first 10 are free. You get, you get 10, 10 free a month. You get 10 in a month. Yep. If you go over that, I've never tried. In fact, I don't even hit my 10. I, but I might I hit my 10, bit, but I yeah. never went over. But and then this, what, what's it, this, this section? This one still is house history. Turn of the century house designs telling you, okay. you know, what the houses look like at a certain time frame. So that gives you an idea how old your house could be. And then when I look for architecture, I pulled up these three. There was more, but I was trying to figure out which one's really connected. Turn of the century house plans, 100 of them on one of the books. That would be interesting to just to look at what your house could have been or should have been before someone remodeled it and broke down walls. I'm guilty of that now. This is a bibliography, which you will find on your um, little pathfinder here. And I start the ones where you can find them in another location of the library. Now, an example of some of the searches, I research history. I just did bits and pieces here to give you an idea. I came across this house when they grabbed it by it. It looked really different because it had like so many different fixtures. I try to find it. It's 904 Westbury. In 1890, it's not there. It's that one blank spot on the corner of Barry and Jackson. Plus, the space below it is also empty. In 1902, you've got a house down here at the bottom now, and you've got the house that's right there, showing you what it looked like, how the outside edge looked like in 1902. Mm -hmm. So somewhere between 1890 and 1902, this house was I would just mention that that's a 1902 Sanborn map, mm -hmm. and you can see they're, they're giving you the address before 1902 and what it is after 1902. Like that top right is, uh, the new address is 903-901 Westbury, the, what the old address was, it's 231. was 231. Mm -hmm. And that's the only year of Sanborn maps where they Right, which I had mentioned yeah. earlier, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another interesting um, uh, aspect for building to find the date that house was built. You could probably do a search on Zillow okay. and find out what they may know. They would have it on record if it was ever sold in a real estate company at one point. It'll be in their database, okay. so you would but get the date. Allen County Government's website, you can uh, click on the GIS system and you can put in that address and then you can click on the information for that address and it will show up the property record card okay. and you'll pull up and you look at that map in there and it will give you the date that house was built. And later on you might see the property card in here because I think I pulled one up from some okay. towns. Next one was like about you found a house in a newspaper clipping. Here's a house in Indianapolis. And they also put the layout of what the house would look. It's two stories. And then the, you can't read the article, but I abstract it. It's a colonial style architecture. It belonged to Mr. and Mrs. George P. Lee. 
at 2734. It was being built for them. And it was in 1907, I believe, or 1909, that this house was built. And then they talk about it was, it had simplicity. It lacked fancy woodwork. It had straight lines. It was spacious. It offered modern convenience. It was cozy, comfortable. Across the front of the house was the living room, and it was well lighted. They talked about the stairway plan was attractive, and it had a landing that didn't really interfere with the layout, and then how it hooked up with the kitchen. They had a dining room that had doors on it that was leaded glass, how you could get some privacy if you wanted to while you were dining. It talks about the fireplace at the south end of the room. It talked about the kitchen, the pantry, and the basement arrangement. The second floor had four bedrooms. There was one bathroom. It said it had plenty of closet room, well-equipped bathroom. Wallpapers throughout the house was artistic. It added a pleasing effect. Woodwork was dark stained oak, simple in line and effective. The house is a model for a small, well-planned house. And the architect was Charles Edgar Bates. All that in one little article, if this was your house. So I decided, okay, I'm going to check on the owners. So I took a look at the census record. In 1910, they're living in North Pennsylvania. Ten years later, they're at Park Avenue. So I thought, okay, what do I do next? City directories. From 1909 to 1914, because they had the cross index in the back of the books, they lived in North Pennsylvania. William Wright took over in 1915 through 1919. After that, it was Ethan A. Dossman from 1920 to 1926. I quit looking because I'm just, you know. But today, the house is now a parking lot. Oh, shoot. So if this used to be your family home, oh. you can't come in and visit it anymore. But look how beautiful that house looked in that newspaper article, you know? You would love to go in and investigate just by the description of what the newspaper had. But it's very disappointing when I went to see where it was today, and this is what I got. A lot of historic beautiful homes are gone, really. This is the accessor's office. This is part of a page. There's another part of the property page. And I had to get it in three screenshots. There's all kinds of information about that house, so much, at the accessor's office. Base area and finished area broken down by floor levels. Rec room area can indicate finished area on the basement level. Factory used to adjust and assess values based on the sales in the neighborhood. They're giving you that information. So there's fireplace, air conditioning, plumbing, there's just a few things. And apparently, they might have made that into apartments by the looks of things. Same deal. Mm-hmm. And right down here, it says you're built. Oh. I can't see it here because it's quite fine. Okay. And I can't see that on my screen. But all this information from the history of that house, it's probably the year built, um, the value, and everything. I mean, they broke it out. And it's really fine print. You have to really blow it up on the screen on the computer when you look at it. So that's why it's so tiny up here, because it's, it's a lot of information out there. Does that have the room design in there? I, I, I don't think I saw okay. the room design, but it described the various rooms. Oh, okay. That doesn't mean it's the original rooms. My house, I knocked out the old bedroom, added 10 feet. Huh. The old bathroom is gone. The kitchen has been changed. No, the kitchen didn't get changed. We blocked one of the entrances because we had a straight entrance from the front door to the back door. We blocked one so we could have more oh, okay. cabinet space. So we did a lot of remodeling. I wish I took pictures before and after. <laughs> I didn't. You believe your house is haunted. What do you do? You want to find out when it was constructed because you don't know how long it could have been. You know, so you research the property when it was purchased, when was it built, was there more than one house built on that property, was there a fire and a new one built on top of it, was there any addition or majors, 
My sister lived in Grand Rapids. She had jars of peanut butter disappear out of her house when she was there. To buy a brand new one, no one had ate it. The jars of peanut butter disappeared. Neighbors would not tell her what happened in that house before she went in and run it in. So yeah, well, within a year after she left, the house burnt down. Whoa. Yeah. Sometimes we think she was crazy, but so. Her husband verified on a few about the stairs, um, the walking up and down the stairs at 2 o'clock in the morning, so yeah. Nobody was there, but you could hear footsteps, the doorbell rang, door open, footsteps again, yeah. So it's like, okay. If anything was haunted, she found it. Whenever we were with her, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. But some people do believe their houses are haunted. You want to talk to neighbors to see if you can find any tragedies that might have happened in the house or outside the house. Um, search newspapers. Look for accidents or tragic events during the time frame you think it might be. Um, look for obituaries. You can even look for death certificates. They're out there now on the Ancestry up to 2011. City directories, county directories will tell you people living there so you can search our obituary index out there in Allen County's resources so you can find out was somebody murdered there, where they strangled. It's hard to say. Looking at cemeteries, maybe they have a clue of who it could have been or how old they were. Cause of death on death records. Okay, now I'm going to local resources and county and state. Here in the local county, you have ARCH, you have the Historical Society. It's in one of your handouts. You have the Allen County Public Library. You have the Building Department. You have county assessors, county recorders. You have the Indiana Department of Natural Resources of Historic Preservation. You have the Indiana Historical Society. You have the Historic Landmarks Foundation and of course the Indiana State Genealogical Library. National, you have the Park Services Natural Register of Historic Homes. When people apply there, you get a, a packet of probably about a quarter of an inch thick or more based on the history of the house. They're probably not how old it is, how valuable it is, how they think it really should be in the historic register. You also have the Historic Preservation Trust area in D.C. And the closest branch office is in Chicago, but they didn't give us an email. So you can contact them. There is a phone number out on that site. I just didn't write it down. Any questions? Well, as you know, you have a copy of this. It's only a draft. My boss this weekend, when he was on a plane, edited it. So I will have to update it before we put it out on the web. This is not on the web yet. When it goes on the web, it will also be in our subject guide turnstile. We are also creating, researching your house in Fort Wayne or Allen County. So this is like a nine or 10 page booklet. It has also been edited, so that, you know what's in store for me in the next few days. I have to go through and tweak it and ask that they turn around and make it. He wants it out on the website, so within the next two or three weeks, maybe before, I know before December, we should have these out on our web, underneath the cat binders. Uh, yes. Okay. What if all you have is a rural route number and a street? Rural route to Covington Road, and you're trying to find the house. That's hard to say. You're going to have to look for properties, you know, like land deeds to get the town range and stuff to at least get a section. We're talking like 1940 to 1950. My grandmother has lived in this house off and on on Olive Road. She was 102 when she died, but she was out there, so I got her road address. All I knew, she lived on Olive Road, and I knew which road to turn and turn again. Uncle Marv was here, she was here, 
Uncle Dane or Uncle Dwayne lived across the street. One time Uncle Mike lived there. So I had at least four uncles that lived near my grandmother at one point. My dad wanted to move out there, but he didn't agree to some of their terms. So. Yeah. But I found her. I didn't find her house. My cousin had it, but he's not out on the road for some reason. But the house across the street showed up when I typed in her address. So. But if you know the road, you can um, probably use Google Map to go through and browse. And if they have a little blue line, you can put a guy on there, you might find the address. Otherwise, you're going to have to look at land records. They're going to tell them, you know, it's going to give you the parcel, it's going to give you a section, it's going to give you a subdivision which you can take and put into the county assessor's office and do it. Some of the census records might show a road, and it won't be route, rural route two or RFD delivery four or whatever. Yeah. They'll have a road listed on the side of the census. And it might have a house address, if not, it just gives you a road. If you lived in Michigan, I can tell you just put in the section number and you'll find the inventory of the property. It shows you the outbuildings and everything else on them. See, each state was different in the WPA. They picked a project. The state of Michigan wanted to equalize their um, rural taxes. So they did a um, property in, rural property in, um, inventory. Indiana, they did a lot of indexing of the books and records to see who was there so that somebody when they were looking for people could easily find them. Alright, anything else? I didn't live in a rural country so I really didn't do a lot of research, but I think if we really tried for our hands to it, it would basically be your county assessments office, tax records, things like that. Okay. Any other questions? Well I thank you for coming. I hope you will come to the other sessions. Please remember we are closed Friday, October 5th, but we open back up on the 6th and we start back up our family history month. Tomorrow is the DNA discussion groups. All right. Thank you.